Assalamu alaikum everybody. Today we'll be looking at Proteus, Providencia and Morganella. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. So, let's jump straight into the video. Proteus, Providencia and Morganella. All of these are gram-negative rods. They cause both community acquired and nosocomial infections. Nosocomial are hospital acquired infections. They're responsible for causing urinary tract infections primarily, but they can also cause pneumonia, wound infections, and septicemia. And they belong to the family Enterobacteriaceae. You know what? Here's a secret. Providencia and Morganella are the species of Proteus. They're responsible for producing phenylalanine deaminase. They're urease positive and they're motile organisms because they've got flagella. Certain strains of Proteus have cell wall O antigens like OX2, OX19, OXK. And the cell wall O antigens of the certain strains of Proteus, like the ones I mentioned, they cross react with antigens of several species of Rickettsia. These Proteus antigens can be used in lab tests to detect the presence of antibodies against certain Rickettsia and patient serum. And this test is called wheel phallix reaction after its originators. There are four medically important species of Proteus. The two ones are renamed. The Proteus morganii is renamed as Morganella morgania. And Proteus redgari is renamed as Providencia redgari. And the other two species are Proteus vulgaris and Proteus mirabilis. These species are distinguished based on several biochemical tests. Proteus mirabilis is indole negative, while the other three species are indole positive. Before talking about Proteus in detail, we should know about bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes, into acid fast, and there's an exception that is mycoplasma. And bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive and gram negative. We are done with all of the gram positive bacteria. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel. Gram-negative bacteria are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria neisserogonariae and Neisseria meningitidis, and also into rods. Rods are further subdivided into aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides, and facultative. Facultative are further subdivided into curved like Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio, and also into straight. And straight ones are further subdivided into enteric and related, which includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsiella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. The topic of today's video. Also into zoonotic, that includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia. And into respiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Bordetella, and Legionella. Enterobacteriaceae and related organisms are further subdivided based on their location. If an organism is present inside and outside the enteric tract, it will be classified as present in both the locations. And these organisms are E. coli and Salmonella. The organisms that are present in the enteric tract are Shigella, Vibrio, Campylobacter, and Helicobacter. And the ones that are present outside the enteric tract include Clepsiella, Enterobacter, Serratia, Proteus, Providencia, Morganella, the topic of today's video, Pseudomonas, Bacteroides, Proatella, and Fusobacterium. But that's not all. Gram-negative bacteria are also classified based on different shapes. If you guys are watching my videos for a longer time, you might have now memorized this classification flowchart. Gram-negative bacteria is divided into diplococci, cocobacilli, rods, and comma shape. Diplococci are further subdivided based on maltose fermentation. If a bacterium ferments maltose, it's Neisseria meningitidis, and if it doesn't, it's Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Cocobacilli includes Haemophilus influenza, Brucella, Pasteurella, Bordetella, Proteus. Rods are further subdivided based on lactose fermentation. If a bacterium ferments lactose, that's going to be fast or slow fermenter. Fast fermenters are Klebsiella, E. coli, and Terobacter, and slow ones are Serratia and others, like Citrobacter. And non-lactose fermenting bacteria are further subdivided based on oxidase test. If a bacterium is oxidase positive, it's Pseudomonas. And if bacteria are oxidase negative, they are Shigella, Salmonella, Proteus, the topic of today's video, and Yersinia. Comma-shaped bacteria are further subdivided based on certain criteria, like if a bacterium produces urease, it's H. pylori. If it grows in alkaline media, it's Vibrio cholerae, and if it grows in 42 degrees Celsius temperature, it's Campylobacter jejuni. Lecture outline, we are done with introduction and classification. Now we will be looking at morphology, habitat and transmission, pathogenesis and clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology. 
The shape of the Proteus, Providencia, and Morganella is rod-shaped. They're bacillus bacteria. Their color is pink. The reason is they are gram-negative bacteria. This is how Proteus mirabilis looks like under the microscope. It is rod-shaped bacterium, as you can see there, this one. Also, this one. These are motile bacteria. Structure. They've got cell wall. They're encapsulated, which means they've got capsule. They're not responsible for forming spores, but they're motile because they've got flagella, habitate, hosts. These organisms are present in the human colon as well as in the soil and water. Transmission. Transmission occurs when the colonic flora colonizes the urethra or the infection site. Pathogenesis. The tendency of these organisms to cause urinary tract infections is probably due to their presence in the colon and to colonization of urethra, especially in women. The vigorous motility of proteus organisms may contribute to their ability to invade the urinary tract. Production of the enzyme urease is also an important factor. Urease hydrolyzes the urea in urine to form ammonia, which raises the pH and it makes the urine alkaline. So if you've got alkaline urine, this encourages the formation of stones. The calculi called struite, composed of magnesium ammonium phosphate. Struoid stones often manifest as staghorn calculi in the renal pelvis. They obstruct urine flow, damage urinary epithelium, and serve as anidus for recurrent infection by trapping bacteria within the stone. Cosalkaline urine favors growth of organisms and more extensive renal damage. Clinical findings. The signs and symptoms of urinary tract infections caused by these organisms cannot be distinguished from those caused by E. coli or other members of Enterobacteriaceae. Proteus species can cause pneumonia, which will have symptoms like fever, cough, shortness of breath, vomiting, fatigue, wound infections, and septicemia. It can also cause urinary tract infections with the symptoms like dysuria, increased frequency and urgency of urination, suprapubic or back pain, small volume urine, dark urine, hematuria. Proteus mirabilis is a species of proteus that can cause most community and hospital acquired infections. Lab diagnosis will need samples of blood, urine, and we also need sample from the wound. On microscopy and gram staining, this bacterium appears to be gram negative because of the pink color. It is rod shaped, the bacillus bacterium, and is pink colored. We're talking about proteus, right? Culture. The colonies are formed by using the blood sample. These organisms usually are highly motile and produce a swarming overgrowth on blood agar. Growth on blood agar containing phenyl ethyl alcohol inhibits swarming, thus allowing isolated colonies of proteus and other organisms to be obtained. They produce non-lactose fermenting colorless colonies on McConkey's or EMB agar. Proteus vulgaris and Proteus mirabilis produce H2S, which blackens the butt of TSI agar. Other tests we can go for our blood tests will do CBC, culture, urine tests, urinary, urine analysis and that, and we'll also go for biochemical tests, which are used for distinguishing these bacteria. Treatment. The treatment for the infections caused by Proteus and its other species are aminoglycosides, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, ampicillin for Proteus mirabilis, cephalosporins, for example, cephotaximine that is used for indole positive species. Prevention. There is no specific preventive measure, but many hospital acquired urinary tract infections can be prevented by prompt removal of urinary catheters. All right, guys, let's have a quick recap. The organism we discussed today is Proteus. We also looked at its different species like Providencia and Morganella. It is responsible for causing urinary tract infections, pneumonia, wound infections, and septicemia. It is transmitted by colonizing the urethra, like the colonic flora colonizes the urethra or other infection sites. Hosts are human, soil, and water. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, blood, and urine exam. For treatment, aminoglycosides, trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, ampicillin, cephalosporin, like cephotaximine are used. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle medzokhrof. And I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.